Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 39. Right. This, this was a tough week for a long-term play. Um, because any play that you made this week is truly a long-term play. Um, there's not a lot that I look at and say, well, in, in two or three weeks, this might pan out. So, this is my pick um, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, and I saw, uh, there was a comment on Instagram, somebody said, why issue 39? Issue 40 is going to be the first appearance of the White Ranger. And, you know, I said, well, tune into the show. And th that's kind of the reason I'm going to tell you why I think that long 39 is a, um, a long-term spec play. Uh, we are about to begin a brand new story arc with Power Rangers. Um, they are, this is going to be their big 2019 event. And if you took part in their 2018 event, then you know that there were first appearances, that some of the issues, issues 25, 26, 27, all hit back issue seriously gold. I'm talking about $25, $30 an issue at one point for just cover A's. Um, some of the unlockable variants did extremely well. So if you've paid attention to that last year, then you know we're gearing up for that. And uh, this is kind of a... Um, a kind of a prologue for that. It, it kind of enters into the storyline. So I think it's kind of getting slept on and everyone's looking at issue 40 as the start of the storyline. And it is, but you know, all over the book, it's advertised um, about how, you know, they're entering into the grid. Uh, and I think that's getting overlooked. Also issue 38 as Arun highlighted on the Indie Spotlight series show on the boom episode. And again, we've got the micro content of just the Power Rangers part. He said issue 38 was the first appearance of the new Solar Rangers team. Issue number 39 is the first cover appearance. And the reason why that's important, again, first cover doesn't beat first appearance, but we've talked about the value of Ranger Slayer. Lord Draken is the, the holy grail right now as far as Power Ranger speculation, but Ranger Slayer is coming in at kind of a close second, maybe a, a 1B. And there's a lot of meat on the bone for the ranger slayer who again first appeared in go go power rangers number eight and um now she's gone and she's got her own team she's leading her own team and again you gotta follow the money boom in re kind of trying to invigorate the power rangers line and bring it into a modern era created these two new characters and um i think they're gonna push these characters to the extent that they can and i think that I'm not a huge team first appearance guy, but I think they put her on this team for a reason. I think this team is going to be important. And so I feel like while this issue may be in between two important issues, that's why it's valuable. Cause I think it's going to get completely overlooked. I think 38, you got that first appearance. People will buy the back issues and 40. You've got that first appearance. And, um, and by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. The first appearance everyone's focused on with issue 40 isn't really like the first appearance that will be the most talked about. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, but issue issue um, issue 39, I think, is getting slept on. And for kind of those reasons, I, I don't expect I don't think dealers probably heavily ordered that. Um, that's why I said Bolo on the 125 variant. Um, I could see that one being in short demand. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, look, I don't know if it's still in stock, but that's another one to check the Boom Studios web store because they they always have the incentives in stock up until the point of sellout. I could see this one still being in stock, but that's why it's a long term play for me. Uh, if issue forty does well, then people will go back to issue thirty nine and 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 want that again. Power Rangers is one of those series is built off a of reader buzz, so you've got to think like how do readers and collectors, you know, true collectors, not speculators. How do they want to buy books? And I just don't think they're going to leave the prologue on the table. I don't think they're going to leave it. They're going to want to have it. They're going to want to, if they're going to buy issues 40 through whatever that storyline runs through 50 or whatever, they're going to want or issue, issue 39. And for those reasons, it's my long-term play of the week. I think that uh, you may not see this shake out in the short term. This may be a six month play. But it, it's one to keep an eye out for, uh, especially if you see these books cheap enough. Or, again, if you're just trying to get bullish on Power Rangers as a property in general, um, look for any of those covers with the Ranger Slayer on the cover.
definitely. So there's Jack's long-term play. This was another book that <clears throat> I didn't read much much about, but since the interview that we've had with the rune, this is another one that he really sold me on, and I've been going back and start slowly reading Power Rangers. I've read Go Go Power Rangers yet, but I've been reading probably since started at issue nine, since that's that was the first appearance of Lord Draken, and, and been reading since then. So not caught up yet, but Rune definitely sold me on this title as well. I know. This is one of the ones that Jack's been champion for a while, yeah. but you know, Jack being from the '80s, sometimes it might be skewed. But I definitely value his opinion since a room backed it up. But, yeah, and, and that another thing to um, you know to kind of uh, uh, keep in mind as we were kind of talking about you know the just the Power Rangers in general not being on um, a lot of people's radars. Another thing to keep in mind is this new storyline kicks off a new writer, Ryan Parrott, is taking over the series. And Ryan Parrott was previously the Go Go Power Rangers writer. Um, Dennis Hopeless, who a lot of people know from his Marvel stuff, was is the one who was writing Power Rangers and created Lord Draken. So um, that's something to keep an eye on again for Ranger Slayer because Ryan Parrott is the one who created Ranger Slayer. So I would expect that to become important if I had to kind of guess. But that's something. It also gives more credence to the importance of Go Go Power Rangers as a series, which I think was looked at more of like. The cartoony Angel Grove series, not quite as um, forward thinking and mature as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. But I think there's some sneaky value in Go Go Power Rangers. And also be on the lookout for those movie homage variants because they're just cool. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, they've got all kinds of old, you talk about 80s. They all kinds of 80s, 90s movie properties. Uh, real, real kind of cool ones and sleepers. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about them.